furnishing entertainment in veterans' hospitals. To volunteer aid as driver with car or entertainer, phone the AWBS, Murray Hill 36125. <laughs> City, the Columbia Broadcasting System, in cooperation with the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service, presents the new Mr. Ace and Jane program, a weekly half-hour comedy series starring radio's original comedy couple, the Aces. <laughs> Once again, the strains of Manhattan Serenade introduce the story of Mr. Ace and his wife, Jane. Tonight, Chapter 4, entitled, Jane Discovers Hidden Talent in a Newsboy, and Mr. Ace has a client looking for a radio program, and before Mr. Ace can stop her, Jane puts her discovery on the air. Or, as Mr. Ace puts it, to err is human, to forgive divine. It took a long time to forgive Jane after this one. I'll tell you about it, gentlemen. Before we join Mr. Ace and Jane, I'd like to get in a word about the men who have already joined our Army or our Air Force. You know, I like to talk about these young Americans because they're men we can be proud of. They're doing the most important job there is, keeping this nation safe and at peace. At the same time, they've done themselves a big favor, for they're really going places, advancing their own careers and ensuring their lifetime security. That's a mighty good combination, isn't it? Yes, sir, when a young man chooses the Army or the Air Force, he's making a wise choice, both for himself and his country. Yes, Mr. Ace, what was that you were saying? Well, this week I'm going to tell you a bedtime story. Once upon a time, there lived in a typical little average town called New York City, a man and his wife, whom we shall call X and Y. He was called X because he's been on the spot since the day he got married. She was called Y because, well, I don't know exactly what the reason was. Dear, why do you have to go to the office so early every morning? There must have been some reason for calling her why. Why do you have to get up at the crank of dawn? They don't call people why for nothing. Why do you always keep your nose to the tombstone? Uh, maybe they called her why because she was always asked... Oh, no, that couldn't be it. Well, anyhow, our bedtime story begins, strangely enough, at breakfast. The alarm clock had failed to go off, and X came rushing in for his orange juice and coffee. Jane, make it snappy. I'm late. Come on, let's get going here, huh? Dear, why do you have to rush around like a chicken with his hat on? Why don't you relax? Uh, look, uh, why? I'm late. I've got to get down to the office. I've got a new client, a big account. What's happening here? Haven't you even made the orange juice yet? Just a minute, dear. And where are my cufflinks? I'm squeezing them now. Uh, <laughs> never mind the orange juice. Where's the coffee? Did you look in the top drawer? Oh, isn't that all? Well, I'm only a half hour late, Jane. Don't let me rush you. All right. Oh, now what? Uh, Jane, there's somebody at the door. I was just going to, dear. Here, uh, drink your orange juice. Okay. The coffee be ready in a jitney. I won't have time for coffee. Good morning, Mrs. H. Oh, hello, Bobby. Morning papers? Papers? Well, I'm busy right now getting breakfast. Come in, Bobby. Who is it, Jane? It's Bobby with the newspaper. Oh. Good morning, Mr. H. Uh, good morning, Bobby. And I'm in a hurry. Sorry, I can't talk to you today. I've got to finish my breakfast and get right down to the office. Like to see a Sunday paper with your breakfast? No, I haven't time to read the Sunday. The Sunday. The Sunday. Oh, no. What's the matter, Oh, dear? Jane, it's Sunday. What's the matter with me? How stupid can a guy be? What kind of a rut am I in here? I'm making a wreck of myself. Sunday, and here I am rushing around like... Oh, well, let's settle down to a leisurely breakfast. Okay, dear, I'll fix you some toast. Thanks. Have you had your breakfast, Bobby? Uh, yes, thanks. In the newspaper business, we have to get an early start. Yeah, in the newspaper. But what papers have you got this morning, Mr. Hurst? Uh, Bobby. Mm-hmm. I have the New York Times, Herald Tribune, the News, the Mirror, Journal American, the Post, and PM. But not necessarily in the order of their importance. Mm-hmm. Reading from right to extreme left, you mean. Uh, what, what happened to that route you were carrying for the sun? Oh, I quit because I disagreed with their editorial policy. Oh, you disagreed. Mm. I'm freelancing now. I see. M- Mr. Ace, are you interested in buying a paper, or are you just making small talk? Uh, Jane, you better handle this deal. I'm not getting it. Mm, here's your toast, dear. Thanks. Well, Bobby, what's in the papers today? I want to get the most of my money, you know. Which paper's got the biggest headlines and the most exciting news? Oh, I only have the comic and magazine section. 
The new sections don't come out till Sunday. Really? Yes, you see, Jane, they print these things in advance, don't they, Bobby? That's right, on Friday. Yes, you see, on Friday. 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 Uh, Jane, uh, my company. Uh, Where's my hat? Out of my way. Dear, where are you running to? What happened to him? I don't know. He shot out of here like a bat out of a belfry. <laughs> When I told you before that this was a bedtime story, I wasn't kidding. Because the client I was rushing off to meet at the advertising agency where I work was a mattress manufacturer. Wanted us to handle his advertising campaign on the radio. This was going to be kind of a tough job because on the radio, you know, they always say, go to your corner drugstore, go to your corner grocer. Well, what could I do for this guy? His mattress company was located in the middle of a block. <laughs> When I got to the office, I went into a huddle about this with my boss, Mr. Norris, of Sutton, Dutton, Mutton, and Norris. Oh, Mr. Norris has a proverb for every occasion. On Mother's Day, he says... A boy's best friend is his mother, I always say. On March 15th, he says... Nothing is certain but death and taxes, I always say. <laughs> On Christmas, he says... Merry Christmas. <laughs> I don't know, you must have a writer... And when we're trying to get a new account, he really rises to the occasion. Mr. Ace, well begun is half done, I always say. Yes, you do. And I think you've made a fine start on Mr. Davidson's mattress account. I like your slogan, Mind Over Mattress. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but, Mr. Norris, I'm not too familiar with radio technique. It's never too late to learn, I always say. Oh, here's Mr. Davidson now. Come in, Mr. Davidson. Well, good morning, Mr. Good Davidson. Good morning, sir. Well, boys, what's the good word this morning? Any new ideas for my radio program? I've got to get back to my office as soon as I... <sighs> Possibly can. <laughs> Mr. Davidson, Mr. Ace has come up with a pretty good slogan. Mind over mattress. Mind over... <sighs> Mattress. Mind of a mystery. Yes, that sounds fine. That ought to catch up. Uh, Mr. Davidson, why don't you have a chair? You seem tired. Tired? Oh, I'm fine. Well, the way you were yawning there, I thought that... Oh, you... oh that. Hey, don't let that bother you. Mattress business, you know, occupational disease. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, Mr. Davidson, do you have any, any certain type of radio program in mind? How about music? Music? Yeah. Music? Well, that's been done, hasn't it? Oh, sorry, lost my head. Uh, what I had in mind was maybe a, a comedy program, a Mr. and Mrs. thing. The husband gets into a lot of trouble because he has a dumb wife. She's always saying the wrong thing. You know what I mean. No, I don't think so, Mr. Davis. It seems a little far-fetched to be somehow. Well, have you got anything better? Well, we've got to get on the air in two weeks. No time to shilly. <sighs> Shall I? Well, uh, why don't you give me a day to think about it, Mr. Davidson? I'll come up with a program idea for your mattress. Let me sleep on it, huh? Okay, Mr. H, you do that. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Good day. Good day. <laughs> After Mr. Davidson left the office, Mr. Norris and I put our heads together. <clears throat> but we could only sleep for about an hour. <laughs> we had too much on our minds. That night after dinner, Jane and I were sitting around the living room working on my problem. Curiously enough, she was a big help to me. We were thinking and pacing. That is, I was thinking and she was pacing. Jane always does my leg work for me. We, uh, we were on her sixth lap when Ken Roberts came over. He's our next-door neighbor, radio announcer. You know what a radio announcer sounds like. Remember, Medford products are delivered everywhere. Delivered from the factory direct to you. That is why more housewives are saying, deliver me from the Medford Company. <laughs> what a huck. The Medford Company will serve you efficiently. It'll serve you promptly. Buy a Medford product. It'll serve you right. Uh, Ken is Jane's friend. You never know when he's going to drop in, and he had a pick tonight. Well, hiya, Jane. Am I interrupting anything? Just fine. Well, how are you? <laughs> how are you, Jane? Oh, just sitting here thinking of a radio program. Yeah, Ken, I'm getting over into your racket, the radio business. Yeah? What's new in radio? New in radio? Are you kidding? Oh, uh, Jane, I'm through thinking you can stop pacing now. Oh, thanks, dear. I'm glad that's over. I nearly wore out the palms of my feet. Oh, dear. Oh, now, who? Jane, the doorbell. I was just going to, dear. Good evening, Mr. Ace. Good evening, Mr. Ace. 
Mrs. H. Oh, hello, Bobby. It's Bobby, dear. Oh, you were here this morning with the papers. Don't you remember, Bobby? Well, hello, Mr. Hurd. Uh, what can we do for you, Bobby? I uh, feel a little funny about this, but I'm here to ask Mrs. H. to be my babysitter. You, uh, you've got a baby? Well, congratulations, Bobby. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> just a minute. Let's get this straightened out. Uh, Bobby, uh, who's the baby in the case? Oddly enough, my parents think I am. Oh. They're going to the movies tonight, and they insist someone sit with me. Guilt complex, you know. I have a Guilt complex? Neurotic, you know. Oh, you are? No, no, they are. Oh, they are. <laughs> Isn't they cute? And you want Mrs. Ace to come over to your house to sit with you while your parents are feeling guilty at the movies? Right? No, if they insist on a babysitter, I prefer one cafeteria style. Cafeteria? I'll stay here. Oh. The pay is 50 cents an hour. I'd like to pay in advance. <laughs> Isn't they cute? Well, uh, pay the cashier. Jane, take care of him. He wants you to keep him company while his parents are hiding out of the movies. Why, well, sure I will, won't we, dear? Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me, Bobby. I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Kenneth Roberts. Kenneth Roberts? No kidding. Gee, Mr. Roberts, am I glad to meet you. Well, Bobby, I'm always glad to meet one of my fans. I, I've enjoyed all your books, Mr. Roberts. Northwest <laughs> Bank, Lydia Bailey. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not that Kenneth Roberts, Bobby. I'm the radio announcer. Radio? That's right, Bobby. Miss, Mrs. A. Yeah? Will you tell your friend, the wrong Kenneth Roberts, that as a newspaper man, I can't associate with anyone in that competitive medium? You, uh, you want Jane to say that? Oh, <clears throat> uh, he's... <laughs> he's so pre-kosher. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh... I'm going to run along. You do, Cam? See you. <laughs> See you later, folks. Uh, glad to have met you, Bobby. I'm sorry we had to meet this way, Mr. Roberts. Perhaps when this radio thing blows over, we... Yes, perhaps, Bobby. Good night. Good night, Cam. Well, Bobby, make yourself comfortable. What shall we do? How about a bedtime story? Well, I could read one to you if you want me to. <laughs> but I'd much prefer discussing the front page news of the day. Oh, you're going to talk shop, huh? Did you see in tonight's paper about the high income taxes the movie stars have to pay? Yes. Mm, what do you want to be when you grow up, Bobby? Rich. Oh, that's a nice business. Yes, and it's not overcrowded, either. <laughs> Do you realize that people like Jimmy Stewart and Humphrey Bogart make more money than the President of the United States? Yes, I've thought of that. Are you sleepy, Bobby? How would you like me to sing you a lullaby? Oh, if you like. My mother usually sings me Tura Lura Lura. Oh, well, that's a nice song. Let me see if I can remember it. Uh, rock a baby <laughs> on the street. Uh, no, Mrs. Ace, that's not it. It goes like this. Tura Lura Lura. Okay, Bobby, now you've done it. He's, uh, Jane's sound asleep. Now, how about you and me, a nice, quiet little game of gin rummy, huh, Bobby? <laughs> of the kid's big professorial talk about guilt complex and the neuroses and all that, he didn't know the first thing about gin rummy. Picked up cards on speculation, kept trying for gin instead of knocking. So I paid him the dollar eighty he won and sent him home. <laughs> Never saw such luck. All through this, the babysitter was sound asleep and having herself a big dream. In technicolor, yes. A dream that went something like this. Hollywood. Yes, sir. Did you ever see so many movie stars all at once? Look, 
There's a whole crowd of them over there. Oh, you know him. That's Sidney Greenstreet. He's so... He's so awful fat, isn't he? Well, if you drank as many Margaret Falcons as he drank. Oh, look, Bobby, over there, coming across the street. Isn't that... Yeah. Gee, that's Bing Crosby. Oh, I'm going to speak to him. He's going to pass right by us. Good evening, Father. <laughs> Gee, am I dreaming? No, Bobby, I am. You said you wanted to be rich. Well, there's nobody richer than a swimming pool, and this is the place. You're going to be a movie star. A uh, taxi lady? Uh, how about a taxi? Show you all around Hollywood, homes of all the famous stars. Why, it's Jimmy Stewart. Hello, Jimmy. Uh, hiya, Jane. Oh, what are you doing out here? I'm just fine. Oh, I want you to meet my friend Bobby Bruce. This is my friend Jimmy Stewart, Bobby. Uh, hiya, Bobby. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Stewart. Oh, come on. Get in the cab, Jane. Uh, you too, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Let's go. Okay. Gee, I wouldn't mind being a movie star if I could drive a taxi. Jimmy Stewart driving a taxi. I never dreamed I'd dream anything like this. Well, <laughs> oh, you see, you see, every penny helps, Jane. Gotta raise some cash. March 15th is just around the corner. Well, that's why I drive this cab for the income taxi company. <laughs> I'm going to put Bobby in the movie. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do it, Jane. Take a tip from me. Anything but the movies. I'll show you what I mean. You see that house over there? Yeah. Well, go right in there and see what Humphrey Bogart's doing. Does Humphrey Bogart live here? No, no, no. He's working here tonight. He's a babysitter. Go on up and see him. Okay. Come on, Bobby. Let's go in. Drink that milk, you brat, or I'll ram it down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bogey. What? Oh, hi, Jane. Be with you as soon as I fold this three-way stretch. <laughs> Who's your little friend, Jane? Oh, well, this is Bobby Bogey. Bogey Bobby. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bogart. I'll oh, peddle your paper. Oh, no, Bobby wants to be a movie star. What is he, stupid? <laughs> all, all people go to the movies for is the popcorn. Radio is the thing. Yeah, you said it, Humphrey. What? Hey, who is this guy? How did he get in here? Oh, it's Ken Roberts. It's my dream. I can invite anybody I want. Okay, Jane, any dream of yours is a dream of mine. What's this racket? Well, I'm a radio announcer, Humphrey. Ken Roberts, a radio announcer? That's him. That's he. That's who they are. <laughs> Ken Roberts. Jane, I hear this guy is worth close to 500 bucks. <laughs> Half the taxes, that is. Wait till I tell baby who I met. Hey, hey, Mr. Roberts, would you do me a favor? Well, if I can, sure, Humphrey. Well, I'd like to hear you read a commercial. Just to me. So give me something to brag about to the guys in the big house down at Warner Brothers. <laughs> Would you do that? Okay, Bogey, you can put the gun down. I'm always ready to read a message from the United States Air Force. You know, there's no thrill that can quite compare with the thrill of flying. That masterful feeling that comes as we take wing and soar through the sky. Gee, Ken Roberts, I can hardly believe it. And for the young man who has his eyes turned upwards, who has his heart set on progressing as aviation progresses... There is no greater satisfaction than that of wearing the silver wings of the United States Air Force. That's right, Ken. Today, every qualified young man has the opportunity of winning his wings through aviation cadet pilot training. If you've had two years of college or can pass a qualifying examination and can meet the age and physical requirements, you can become a full-fledged pilot after one year of training. Better than mind and baby. You'll be earning up to $336 a month after that first year, and your own future will be as unlimited as the future of aviation itself. You'll be flying the latest military aircraft, and you'll have a chance to compete for a regular Air Force commission. So, if you're the type of young man who wants to go far in aviation, visit your nearest recruiting office or Air Force base right away. You'll find the Aviation Cadet Pilot Training Program offers you the finest career possible. Gee, thanks, Ken. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're thinking. How does he know what his wife's dreaming about? <laughs> well, sue me. Well, there's so much for dreaming. The next morning, I suggested Bobby for the mattress radio program. It was a natural thing to do. But I get into more trouble doing what comes naturally. We took Bobby and nursed him and rehearsed him. Mr. Davison bought time on the radio, and the next evening, we were ready to go on the air. It's now about five minutes before broadcast time, and Mr. Davis and I are with a network vice president in charge of uh, mattress programs, I guess. Uh, Mr. 
face, where is the boy? Time and tide wait for no man, I always say. Uh, Mr. Norris, they'll be here any minute. Jane's bringing him over. Well, we still have a few minutes, gentlemen. <clears throat> On behalf of our network, may I wish you a happy Hooper? Happy Hooper. Oh, the Hooper survey of listeners. Oh, here they are. Jane, it's about time. Just yes, fine. Mm. Dear, I'm afraid we're in for some T-R-U-B-E-L. Trouble? What kind of trouble can we have? Uh, Bobby's here with you. But Bobby doesn't want to go on the program. Why? What's that? What did she say, Mr. Uh, Ace? Just a minute, Mr. Norris. Uh, Bobby, what's the matter? Well, Mr. Ace, I've given the matter a lot of thought. Thought? Look, Bobby, this is radio. You don't have to think. <laughs> what, uh, what do you mean you won't go on? As a newspaper man, I feel I'd be compromising my principles by lending the, my support to this com competitive medium called radio. Uh, what? 30 seconds, gentlemen. Uh, Bobby, don't you realize that thousands of dollars have been spent preparing this program? You can't do this thing. Well, well, come on. It's 10 o'clock. But the kid won't go on. Well, we'll just have to put something else on the air. Oh, no. You will not. We bought this diamond. You'll put something else That's on it. Right. Possession is nine points of the law, I always say. Bobby, please. People are listening to their radios and nothing's coming out. Oh, great heaven. Suppose the people get used to that and like it. Oh. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, something must go out over our network. If you put something else on this time, I'll bring suit against this network. You'll bring suit. I'll sue you. I'll sue your whole company. I'll sue this boy. Well, Mr. I don't see what you can see him for. Well, I sue what I can see him for. Uh, do that again, please. <laughs> I sued. I saw what I could see him for. That's what I see. Uh, sued. Uh, what did you say? I sued. Uh, Jane, will you please stay out of there? Now, sue here, gentlemen. Uh, I mean, uh, see. Uh, saw. Mister, if there's anything you want to see, will you sue it? Well, I am suing it. I'm going to call Master Control. We'll soon saw what we can sue about this. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who is this? Yeah, what are you doing on this line? This is Mr. myself on the back all night. Big genius. I was even thinking of changing my name to Orson. I, uh, I was made as far as I could sue. Uh, see. Mr. Norris was showering me with compliments, but I was busy with my own thoughts. Orson, yeah. Orson Ace. Not bad, I thought. When who should come bounding in but Jane? Good morning, gentlemen. Well, hello, Rita. Uh, Jane. Good morning, Mrs. Ace. I'm just fine. Uh, did you read the reviews our radio show got in the papers today? Reviews? What did they say? Not much they didn't. I bought them all, even this one, the Daily Worker. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it says, this program is a capitalistic plot to lull the people into a feeling of false security. Oh, fine. What, what do the other papers say? Never mind. Here's the Journal of America. Yeah. Listen to this one. Yeah. This new radio program is a communistic device to confuse the voters of this country. Oh, great, great. Never mind what the newspapers say. The client likes the program, and that's all that really matters. Yeah, that's all. Well, gentlemen, ain't fine kettle of fish. Oh, good morning, Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, and congratulations on your great news. Yes, man. You can tear up my contract. We never had so many complaints since we've been in business. What? But, Mr. Davison, last night you yes. said... Mr. Norris, what is this Hooper business? Hooper? Why, that's a telephone survey. They call up listeners and ask them what radio program they're listening to. Yeah, but of course you can't expect a big Hooper rating on one program. Oh, you? you can't, can't you? Well, let me tell you something. We put on a program. Our listeners nicely fall into a peaceful slumber... When this Hooper has to call up thousands of people out of a sound sleep to ask them what program they're listening to. <laughs> I'm through with radio. Tear up my contract. Oh, now, wait. Isn't that awful? Well, they even called me. 
and woke me up out of the sweetest dream I ever had. There I was in Hollywood, surrounded by the most beautiful... In bunch. Hollywood last night? I was there last night. Did you see Jimmy Stewart and Happy Bogart? Yeah, I saw them. Uh, what, what, what's going on? I got out of uh, a taxi on Hollywood and fine. I thought you looked familiar. What is it? What, 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 what's I got going into on? the taxi just as you got out. By George, I remember now. There was a blonde getting into the taxi. That was me. You whistled at me. What, what, what's going on? <laughs> well, what do you know? Nothing. What's going on? <laughs> Am I glad to see you again, blondie? Yes. It's me. I'm Mrs. Ace. <laughs> you are? Oh, what, Mr. Ace, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't know it was your wife. I was uh, What is it? What, what, what? Mrs. What? Ace, uh, how about you and I going somewhere and having a little drink? We've got lots to well, I can't right now. My husband's kind of worried about that contract, and he gets jealous when a stranger whistles at me. Oh, well, I'll straighten that out. Miss Ace, believe me, I didn't know she was your wife. And to show you how sorry I am, the contract stands as is, okay? Okay, yes, sir. Well, well what's going on? What, what, what happened? Oh, my dear. Is everything all right? Oh, yes, fine. Yeah, come on, what did you like to do? <laughs> oh, well, we'll dream up something. <laughs> yes, we certainly will, won't we? <laughs> See you later, dear. <laughs> uh, what, what, what happened? What, what is it? What's say, going on? Say, Miss Day, did Stuart drive you out to see Betty Grable? No, he drove me out to see Humphrey Bogart. Not me. I saw Betty Grable. To each his own. Well, what's going on here? What happened? <laughs> I'll give you the title of Chapter 5 in the story of Mr. Ace and Jane. Did you know that during the past year, enlistment standards have been raised to the highest requirements in our Army and our Air Force history? Yes, the average soldier and airman now scores 20% higher than a minimum standard for acceptance a year ago, and more than twice as high as the wartime requirements. In fact, only 60% of those applying for enlistment can be accepted under these new high standards. For a young man who does measure up, the Army or Air Force is a mighty good bet. And it's my bet that a visit to the nearest recruiting office will prove to any qualified young man that there's an Army or an Air Force career tailor-made for him. Mr. Ace and Jane will bring you Chapter 5, entitled, Jane's Cousin Miss Anderson, who is Mr. Ace's secretary, antagonizes Mr. Ace's boss and has to be fired. But Jane won't hear of it and outmaneuvers the boss in what she calls a battle of wits. Or, as Mr. Ace puts it, uh, happiness is relative. The fewer relatives, the more happiness. <laughs> Good night. Me too. Goodman Ace. Original music conducted by Morris Sutton. In the supporting cast tonight were Alan Melvin and impersonations of the movie stars, Everett Sloan as the network executive, Eric Dresper as Mr. Norris, John Griggs as Mr. Davidson, Edwin Bruce as the newsboy with Bobby White singing Tura Laura Laura, and this is Ken Roberts announcing that you may hear Chapter 5 of Mr. Ace and Jane next week at this same time over this same station. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.